things in the same time. This is converged network. It means a complex network that can handle these kind of tasks. So this is just an expression. You don't need to learn it. This is just converged. No, you can call it anything you want, but just know the complex network. Yeah. Any type of network that can carry voice, video, data, and such these things on the same network. So we've got different kinds of things. Any problem? What is uh, important for a network? Architecture of the network means designing the network is also an important thing. Consider this scenario. You've got two routers. We're going to uh, show you what kinds of different devices that we've got. But first of all, just imagine this page. We've got internet here, four routers and two different LANs. Imagine that one of the routers is fall, dropped, broken, anything. It's not existed anymore. So you can use the other uplinks, the other links to work. It might be expensive. It might be slow. It might it might be lots of things, but it is working. The point is important for us is working. Okay? So for uh, designing a network, you have to follow four important steps. First of all, fault tolerance. It means that, as I said, if one of the devices is missing, you still have other connections for using the network. As I said, it must be, it might be expensive, slow, or anything. But you still can work, and you've got time to, I don't know, change the device, recover it, configure it again, or anything else. So, the main important thing is anything happens to any parts of network, the whole network won't down. Okay? Consider this. They, yeah. are, the, they are like a server? No, these are the devices. We're not talking about server, but consider servers too. You've got a web page. You've got a web server, sorry. If it goes down, what will happen? For example, you are Yahoo. There are thousands of people are working with you at the same time. So, consider this. You are falling for five minutes. It's a disaster for Yahoo. Because he may lose hundreds of customers. Okay? So, there must be different servers. If one of them fails, the other one will won for him. That's called fault tolerance. It means manage somehow to reduce the fault tolerance. If one of them is broke, you can, it can still work it. Wake him up. And uh, the second one is scalability. It means that if, for example, you want to add another LAN to your network, you don't need to change all of them. You just need to get the link from one of them to another network. So if you want to scale it, make it bigger. Hmm? Imagine that you've got a network in two buildings, you want to add the third building. So you should do that without any mistakes, without any problems. Okay. So the second thing, if you want to make it bigger, you don't need to change all the things. So this is the second. Okay, Paul. Mm -hmm. Quality of service that we're going to reach, and I, I think in the next slide, and then security. We all know about security. Do I need to explain? Sorry. Uh, if you, um, for example, I'm going to um, configure uh, ten computers in a. For example, laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, for the fault tolerance, uh, you mean that uh, I should be considered about. Uh, I shouldn't have any. Uh, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Revival point for uh, uh, my network. What do you mean revival point? A, a point or a node that uh, it, it damaged everything. Uh, it's the rule for all kinds of networks. Yeah. Two, three, it must be. It must be a rule for all kinds of networks. Mm. You've but got ten it's not, I think. This one. You've got nodes here. Mm. If you connect them like this, mm -hmm. and one of them is broken, what will happen? It's a disaster for some of them. Okay? But for example, imagine this scenario, if you, all of them 
will be linked from here. It is much better if you lose one of them. They also can connect to each other. They also can use the other way, but it's it's not a good thing. If you're talking about the nodes, we talk about nodes. These are computers. Yes. But we're not here talking about nodes. We're talking about the routers, mm -hmm. the elements of the network. It is also important. So it, it means that anything that happens to what, for example, you can have any kind of scenario here, but one server. It's connected somehow. Okay. And imagine this. With the cables unplugged, what will happen? You will lose everything because nobody can work with server. So why? We've got another server who can also call it. And they are the same. This is, this is one of the managing the false server. We've got others of things. Is it like a backup server? Yes, exactly. We've got backup plan. This is the backup plan. You fail this one. But you also get a backup plan for device, for your servers, for your anything. This is exactly getting backup plan, but you have to figure it before it happens, not after that. So each network uh, must have uh, at least two servers, right? Yeah, we can say that. Yes. It's, it's really depends on you. You are designing a network. Yeah, this is the rule. No, this is not rule. Yeah, this is, this is rule, rule, but it's really up to you. Yeah. For example, this is just a temporary server. You just copy some files on it. Do you really need to have a backup one? No. But if it's, I don't know, security server for you, mail server for you, yes. You definitely need the backup one. So it really depends on you. You know, we just give you some information about the standard things. Yeah. You are the one who knows the scenario. I don't know. I just, give, I just let you know that you should consider these things. So the rules is up to you, not to me. Anything else? Here we want to send the packet somewhere. Okay? We've got five routers and we just need to send an email to someone here. Okay? In the huh? In the from packet server. Yeah, anything. Could be anything. So you can use different ways for reaching the destination. If any of them fail, you still got other connections. So this is the other thing. We're going to understand why we need these kinds of implementations and after that, we're going to learn how we can connect them like this. So first of all, you have to know why it is important. Any problem? Standard protocol, common protocols, it's just nothing. You're, you're connected from the local ISP, then local ISP to the bigger one, then to the bigger one, and you can connect the whole city together, the whole country, city, country, whole, anything. So, I mean, the network is not just something that you don't know. It's the big one. No, it's not. It's, it's really connecting different networks, small networks. Together will be the big internet that we've got. So I don't really like this scale, but it's, it's the structure. Priority. Consider this. We are in BTH. One of us is talking with the phone, with the IP telephony. We call it voice over IP. Do you know what is IP? Hmm? Protocol, internet protocol. Yeah, internet protocol. So it means that we are using internet for voice calls. So one of us is talking to, I don't know, her friend or something with the IP telephone. The other one is checking his financial translation, is going to pay the rent. The other one is browsing the web. So there are three things. Here we've got converged network. There are three different things that are going to happen inside ETH network. Huh? Did you get the meaning of converge here? Exactly. So we've got different things. Exactly. So, well, that it, this is the cable that connects us to the network, okay? We're going to give them the priority. For example, we will give the voice over IP the higher priority. Why? Because you don't need to have a delay, and you don't want to have a delay when you're talking. So if the, the quantity of the packet on the cable must be dedicated to this one first, because it's got a high priority, then the financial trend. Uh, transactions, then the web page. You can wait one second more for browsing the web. 
it won't kill you. Okay? But if you're talking to someone, you need to have the information at the moment because you're talking to him. Sorry, this is a this is a rule. It is some part of the quality of service, as you can say. Explain the factors that necessitate quality of service. So this is long to call yes, this is a rule. You have to get a quality of service. And here I told you that you've got quality of service, so we're going to talk about quality of service. And we are talking about quality of service. So this is the thing that you have to do. Put them on different queues. For example, here we've got five of this one. This is the main priority for us. This is the second one, this is the third one. So that's why we've got different 